Here we are at Clackamas Community College in the Industrial Technology Center. And we're gonna do a walk around on this Akuma Genos L250 Type 2. Let's start around the back side. Okay, here we are on the back side. You can see the electrical cabinet, some other uh, sheet metal work over here covering some of the other components. Down below, we have a coolant tank. You can even see a motor off to the left down there on the tank. That's the coolant pump and, and pump motor. Down here on the bottom, you can actually see the level of the coolant, okay? That needs to be checked from time to time. You need to kind of keep track of that. Um, over here, we've got some gauges. These are all uh, showing us hydraulic pressure. Uh, the bottom one is showing us the overall hydraulic pressure created by the pump. And then the upper gauge is showing us the um, tailstock hydraulic pressure, which is at zero right now because we're not using it. Just to the left of that, there's a little knob. It says pressure right on it. That knob is to adjust the tailstock pressure. Okay, let's come around the side of the machine. The side of the machine, we've got a uh, breaker that turns the, the main power on and off, okay? Um, the other thing you see on the side of the machine is this uh, sheet metal box. There's kind of a, a round cover on it. All of that is used to access the back side of the spindle. Okay, down below that, we've got the whey oil tank. It's full at this time. Looks like it's in really good shape. The way oil is used to lubricate all the slides on the machine. It's all automatic. Coming around to the front of the machine, uh, the door is open right now. Let's go ahead and close the door partially so we can see what's going on here. Okay, what we have here is another gauge. This is a hydraulic gauge, and there's another knob down below there. It says pressure on it. That can be turned to adjust the chucking pressure on the machine. There's a lot of information on the front of the machine regarding lube points, all kinds of warnings, and lots of other information. Coming down here in front of the machine, we have the yellow foot pedal here. It's got a cover that's been placed on top there. This particular foot pedal is for opening and closing the collet chuck, which is right there. These other two, these are for operating the tailstock. You can either extend or retract the tailstock. It's one foot pedal for each. Okay, looking inside of the machine. As I said before, we have the spindle. There's also an arm there that is in the up position. Let's go ahead and bring that down. This arm is called the manual touch setter. It has a Renishaw probe on it, and this is used to touch off and set up X and Z tool offsets for each of the tools that you find on the 12 station turret. Okay, let's put that back up. All right. Back here, we've got the tailstock. It's been moved all the way to the back position, the hydraulic tailstock, and you set this up by moving it forward and back along the dovetail, and then you can retract the hydraulic piston by either using M codes in a program, or you can also use the foot pedals as I showed you before. Over here, we've got the control. This is the main screen here, and this is called the home screen. Down below, we have the, uh, the keypad, alphanumeric keypad, and then some of the other controls that go with the machine down below here. Okay, around this side of the machine, we have a chip conveyor. Okay, you can see it enters the machine there, goes all the way down where the chips are falling while you're machining. And it is currently not on, but it is operated by these three buttons, forward, stop, or reverse. So normal operation would be operating forward. Let me go ahead and turn that on. Just turn the conveyor on, and that will convey the chips up here and dump them into this 55-gallon drum here. Okay, let's go take a look inside and watch that thing move a little bit. 
you can see that it is moving very slowly. And uh, normal operation for a chip conveyor in production would be just to leave it on in the forward direction. The only reason you have a reverse really is just to clear an obstruction of some kind. Okay, around this side of the machine, not much to note. There is a hydraulic tank level right down here and another level on the coolant tank here. So there's one here and one over on the other side. And that's pretty much the entire walk around of the machine.